So here is the problem that I have. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but you can see there's just a dribbling leak that is coming down here. It's one of these three connection points. It's not coming down from the three at the top. It's just one of these here. I'm assuming um, it's from the the main pressure supply line uh, that actually goes to the the valve block that's on the left hand side of the roof structure. Interestingly the, the o-rings that are inside there are sealing perfectly when I'm using the roof so it's actually applying pressure and as an o-ring would normally do it's actually sealing it using that pressure very well but when the pressure is released because I can actually make the roof go up and down a hundred times and there wouldn't be a drop come out of it. It's only when it just sits here in the the hours and days afterwards that this dribbles out and to the point where it's actually leaking out the bottom of the car and soaking the foam that sits around this whole thing with with fluid and leaking to the point where it then starts to suck air and not actually make the roof work correctly so I'm going to replace the o-rings that are in there So the way these are fitted together is for each of these connections inside there's actually a square section of a rubber o-ring size 006 behind that brass bush and I'm assuming the way these are constructed is that the bush isn't there to start off with they just put the rubber o-ring in there and then they push the, the bush in there. Now you could drill out the bush and then try and replace those if you like. However, what you can do is just remove the, the O-ring uh, and replace it. It's pretty tight. The dimensions of these, it's size 006, which is a standard size O-ring, uh, but these are a square section. Is uh, It's one eighth of an inch inside diameter and the section is one sixteenth, which is about, if you look at in millimeters, uh, sorry, in inches is 0 0.114 by 0 0.007. Okay, but a standard size 006 is what you're looking for. I actually haven't been able to find those here in Australia if I wanted to get them from the US because they're so small and square section O-rings are actually quite unusual these days. It was going to cost me an absolute fortune. So I'm going to use X-rings because you don't use, you don't use circular section ones because they're just not going to seal as well um, so i've been able to chase down these which look pretty much exactly the same except if you actually look at them closely they're actually an x-ring vice a square section and that should actually seal a little bit better the way to actually get these in and out and i'll just demonstrate using a bottle as though that's actually the hole here's a really big o-ring and that brass bushing is actually sitting over the top of it like that and obviously the fitting the hydraulic fitting would sit would just go straight down in the middle there is i'm going to use three tools i'm going to use two standard needles and this little one here that i've made up and what this is it's just a needle that i have then just put under a blowtorch got red hot and bent it to the shape that i wanted to um, this bit here is actually just to hold on to the bit that's actually doing the work is this bit down here and i'm not sure if you can see that at all i'll try and put it like that against the white you're probably not going to be able to see that but that has just got a tiny little hook on the end and the way that i made that was i just bent it to the side let it cool down and then just clipped it so that hook is only about probably a millimeter long i've just sanded it slightly so it doesn't cut but it's got a good grab on it so i can actually pull the o-rings out and help putting them in as well so that's what i've made and i persevered this with a fair while to actually try and find something that would work and that seems to work fairly rapidly so the ways these actually, uh, I'm gonna get these out is firstly, because they're a square section O-ring getting, and this is just my simulated needle, it's just a, a big uh, wooden skewer. So I'm gonna get use my two needles to sort of eventually get, pull it out a little bit and then pull it out. And eventually what I wanna do is get it so it's like that. So it's actually just jammed in there in the slot with, that's a bit hard here, with this sort of sticking out like that behind. And then what I'm going to do is get my tool in behind here because it's actually going to be sitting out like that and actually get my tool in behind, twist it so the hook is, and then I'm going to pull it up and out. Now, I'll show you me actually doing that, but hopefully that explains well what I'm actually trying to do.
Now here's how I got the new O-rings in. It's an exercise in tenacity, um, so be patient, but this is what worked for me. To actually get it in because unlike this where there's plenty of room in here because it's such a fat O-ring relative to the hole, it's actually pretty hard to get it into the spot that you want. So the way I found it, I'm just gonna get a small pair of pliers and I sort of push it all the way down and actually push it, if that bushing is sitting at the top there, I'm gonna push it to a point where it can actually then, I can get my little wooden skewer and push it into that slot. So the bushing is gonna be sitting over the top like that. And then once it's there, then I can actually get my little hook tool and put it in there and maneuver it around so it actually gets into there. And then I can pull it up very gently until it pops into place. Because it's an X ring or a quad ring, it's not going to sort of sit there perfectly like an O ring. So make sure you look down under a good light with a magnifying glass and check that it's not twisted or anything like that. If it happens that you do have a twist, you don't have to pull it out, just get a little needle in there and sort of just pull it out and push it back in again and it'll eventually put itself into the right spot. So it looks actually like just an O-ring. You'll see that top ceiling edge all the way around and be able to see straight down into it and then you'll know that it's fitted. When you're actually fitting the, the actual hydraulic fittings in the car, make sure that you've got a good amount of oil on the actual fitting itself and then wiggle it as it goes in don't just push it in because what you don't want that thing to do because it's going to be fairly tight uh, the first time around make sure that it doesn't deform or get damaged so be nice and gentle with that So I've just slowly prodded that down to the hole and as it just gets to the point where it can go under that lip I push it sideways under the lip and I can see that it's under the lip on one side and it's jammed down in the hole on the other. Now I'm going to get my little hook tool. I'm going to point it towards the bit that's under the lip to start off with and wiggle it down in there. around and pull it up. Now I can see that's in there but it's a little bit twisted so what I'm going to do is just get my needle and where it's twisted I'm just going to let it pull it out and let it pop back into place. And there we go that's just popped back into place and obviously you can't see that but I can now see that it is in place consistently all the way around. 